Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Modern Health with Dr. Jane. I, of course, am Dr. Jane, a naturopathic doctor and natural fertility expert. And today I have my patient with me, Catherine, who's 22 weeks pregnant. And we've been working together for almost a year now, or it has been a complete year. And I'm just going to let you introduce yourself, tell people who you are, what you do, and where you're from. Sure. I'm Catherine Laska. I live in Ottawa. I was born and raised in Ottawa. I am currently working as a public servant in government. I have worked in the nonprofit community and private sector before that. So have been doing a, a whole bunch of really cool things and working with Jane. It'll be a year in October. A year in October. Yeah, that's it. I was like, I knew it's somewhere in the fall. So another, another month and possibly considering taking up some stand up comedy. <laughs> yeah i've got a note among all the notes that i've taken from all the things i've learned from you i also have my running <laughs> thing of jokes and and uh maybe paper. we'll get to hear some of them today maybe but Absolutely. i just remember being like you're really funny you should really look into this and you're like i actually am looking into it <laughs> Yeah. amazing thanks for being here kat and really the goal is to just kind of help people see your story hear your story and see if that's something that resonates for them and some of the kind of challenges and obstacles that you had and some of the risks and the things that you did in order to get here, because let's talk about where were you before you met? Like, why did you reach out to me? When I was thinking even about this conversation, I was, I would map out that my journey started when I was 11 years old and I got my period. I was literally in grade six. Uh, and I feel like my period through my whole life has always been like, shrouded in mystery I, I would say that I was still kind of in the generation of of periods are gross and scary and shameful and that was the first early years um and I had painful periods since like since the first day I had a period in grade six I thought I was sick and needed to go home I was going to call my mom and got my period and from grade seven eight nine it got much worse I was I had debilitating back pain primarily and and cramps and that was the era where yeah like periods are gross no one talks about it um yes. if you talk to anybody about having your period and having period pain where they're like yeah that's what you know period pain like that's normal that's what being a girl and a woman is kind of like get used to it um and then I uh, I, I had really bad acne and skin when I was in high school. So they put me on Accutane. And when you're on Accutane, the, the doctor automatically puts you on birth control. So that's just by default what happened. And I was on birth control uh, for several years during high school and university. And then after university, I like I just I felt there was a number of symptoms and things that were that were recurring with birth control. And I wanted to see what it was like to be in my early 20s and have quote natural periods or at least try not did just take the remove the hormones from the equation and did the birth control when you were put on birth control did that make your period pain better did it decrease the, the heaviness of your cycle or was it still something that you struggled with but just maybe not as much great question so i i had a few different forms of birth control i was on the oral contraceptive so that mostly reduced the the volume I think of, of my periods, but I still had like cramps, low, low level cramps and back pain. Um, I did the Nuva ring for a while, which I, which you still get a normal period or like a, like a lighter period then as well. And I would also get some light cramping and then I, right. And then the, the last chapter was an IUD, but so I, for, for several years, I was not on any birth control uh, for actually almost almost a decade, eight years. I wasn't on anything, but I had, but my periods became extremely painful. I, I vividly remember being at the office in my private sector job. I had a really good relationship with my, my male boss at the time and he came to see me and I was lying on the floor under my desk because I was in so much pain yes. um, from just like horrible debilitating cramps. Um, another good friend of mine who recently moved to Ireland uh, and I shared that I was pregnant. He's like, wow, you've come a long day from that time we tried to have dinner and you, we had to take a taxi because you were lying on a public bench and you were in so much pain. And I had forgotten about that. I, I honestly had forgotten the level. I don't think you ever told me that. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, I, there was, and, and it's, it's insane because I had these, like, I have, I have, I have so many examples of that where my period was a debilitating monthly event. Uh, and you know, I would, I, I had reached out to my doctor at the time. So I, again, yeah, so I live in Ontario. We have a, a health care 
problem. We've always had a, a lack of doctors and uh, I didn't have a family doctor for several years. Went into some walk-in clinics to talk to them about my period pain and that accomplished nothing almost. I mean, they couldn't give me anything and kind of got the speech again that, you know, being a woman hurts. Uh, finally got in with a family doctor. One of the top things on my list when I went to see her was was period pain. And she just gave me extra, like she prescribed extra strength Advil. So here you go. Some really super strong Advil. That's what you should take. So I had that. I carry, I, when I knew my period was coming, I basically had that in my bag ready to go. And I just anticipated and planned around it. Um, and then, it, but it like, even with that, it would still, like, it would take a while for it to kick in. And then if I wasn't taking it constantly and who, who really wants to take painkillers on every four or five oh, yeah. hours, it just seemed, it seemed outrageous, but that was, if I didn't take that, then I was lying on the floor and lying on public benches and, and canceling plans. And, um, I went back several times to my family doctor to say, like, I'm just really in a lot of pain and it didn't seem to get any traction. Um, I think the I have one, two pivotal moments I would say that connects me with you was an event at the Fringe Festival here in Ottawa. And there was a, there was actually a, like a theater piece called, it's called a period piece. And it's a theater, an interactive theater thing that they have developed that is all about periods. It's super interesting. It's really well put together and they've been, uh, they've been going around, they tour some high schools and they do these shows, but it, it's an interesting way to talk about it. And near the end, they asked the public and the audience if there was anything that they wanted to share. And some people stood up and shared things. And there was a woman who stood up in this, in this show. And she's like, I want everyone to know that that period pain is not normal. You do not have to suffer. And this, and I, and I can't remember if she said she had endometriosis. I don't think I even knew what endometriosis was. Uh, she stood up and she's like, this, I want people to know that this is not normal and you don't have to suffer and like, you know, seek help and there, and the someone will help you. <laughs> And I had listened to her. I was like, okay, I will go back and advocate for myself and not take no for an answer. And I finally got a referral to a gynecologist for my doctor. I ended up going to a gynecologist in Ottawa that's known to be one of the, the best endometriosis doctors. Uh, and then, uh, so she diagnosed me with endometriosis and that would have been in 2018. Um, and then if like so the immediate thing at that point was yeah here's here you're going to put you we're going to put you in an iud and uh oral contraceptive like basically additional hormone medication so i was on both and so effectively and did you have a hesitation to go back on it because you said that you wanted to see what the natural period was like but it sounds like by that point you were just like i'm done and i need something that's gonna help me manage my day-to-day that's a great question. Basically what happened? I, I, it was funny because a lot of my friends and people around me are on, were on birth control and I was telling them like, I'm on, you know, I'm not on birth control. And they were like, oh, like, wow. That's, that's crazy. Why are you not on birth control? Like, oh, that's <laughs> bold of you. And like, how do you yeah. do it? And aren't you worried? And all these things. And if it, if it wasn't for the fact that I was lying on the ground in debilitating pain, I had no desire to be on birth control. I, other, like everything else worked, felt fine and yeah. I didn't I didn't like how I felt when I was on on hormones I know like pre like when I was on oral and and even yeah. the neuter ring I gained weight I often had bacterial vaginosis and other things that were kind of mm. um that would manifest and uh and so, so I, known side effects like for listeners who don't know those are actually like very well known side effects of birth control and then with endometriosis there is an imbalance in the gut microbiome and the reproductive microbiome that predisposes you more to those things sometimes i find people who don't connect the dots but it's like yep it's all connected like this little pill that you take that changes your hormones connects to a lot of symptoms that you're already experiencing that you think are not related i just wanted to make that you know point because a lot of people don't know yeah and so I don't know I guess I was because I had finally felt like I had a breakthrough with my doctor and they're like here's an here's an end a gynecologist endometriosis and they're like here's your diagnosis this is what you have and it I didn't feel like I was in a position at that point to say here's what I'm comfortable with and here are my limitations they were like I wasn't given options it was like great yes. <laughs> do is uh, there's like it's like this and then you know if it really ex we, we try to avoid laparoscopy as much as possible like if you get to that point if this doesn't work we'll escalate you on harder drugs harder drugs and then consider surgery like it wasn't really like do you want abc it was like we're gonna do one two three and see yep. if they work and so i i went back on to yeah so there was an iud and hormones and that i was on for uh three 
almost three years. And, uh, and so effectively had no, had no periods anymore, had no pain, but felt in some ways like I was like, yeah, having had my period, out. <laughs> yeah, just feeling kind of like I wasn't going through what I was supposed to be going through on a monthly basis. And it was strange. And I, and so that, and then the other pivotal moment um, was when I talked to my gynecologist, I had an annual check-in with her and, and I was saying, so, you know, at this point, my, at the time I talked to her, that my partner and I are thinking at some point of starting a family, you know, when that, when we're ready to do that, what happens? And I always remember her answer to me is like, well, we're going to take out your birth control and you just got to hope that you're one of the lucky ones that gets pregnant quickly and doesn't suffer for too long. That was it. That was our conversation. And I couldn't believe, um, that was, that was in the, in the winter of 2021. And I couldn't believe that in 2021, like we're, we were just going to rely on hope and luck. And yeah, that's uh, crazy. I had asked, I was like, is, is there really nothing else I can do? She's like, well, once you're off birth control, then like, of course it's going to come back and it's going to hurt again. That was it. Um, and I, and then I reached out to, um, and then I saw some of your posts on, on social media. There was a friend who had shared her experience with you, uh, I think in the summer. And I was getting kind of contemplating whether we were ready to start a family and what we were going to do and what order of things we were going to do things. I'm a planner. Totally. <laughs> plan things and uh I reached out to you I think it was in September of 2022 and started our conversation and yeah there we are thank you for sharing. there's there's a lot of uh goodies in there that I think very relatable um what I'm kind of wondering is there the pivotal moments they're really you know they're really important because they made you change either get the help that you needed or made you think or say hey this person is not going to help me like they don't have the help for me. So that made you reach out for something else. It sounds like deep down, like talk about the deep down. Like, did you know that there was another solution? Did you know that there's something that you could do to improve the situation? Or did it feel like I'm just poking in the dark here? I live in Ottawa. I live in a major Canadian city. I don't know how much time I spent on Google, like Google endometriosis, like treatments, solutions, whatever. And I can't, I, I found approaching nothing other than some, oftentimes the gynecologist that I worked with, their name came up on, on like ratemymd.com. And <laughs> I, I, and then there was a few handful of Facebook, Facebook endometriosis support groups. And those were frankly super scary, but I didn't see like, a lot of people mostly talked about you know, a doctor out of Kingston that apparently does a bunch of laparoscopies and you don't need a referral. And like, just like, it was extreme solutions and that's it. I actually didn't know what else I could be tapping into. And I felt really at a loss. I didn't like, I went back to my family doctor and at some point they, in the, especially in the last year and some, they, they questioned whether or not I should even consider having a family. They're like, well, it sounds like you're not a candidate and maybe you should just go back on birth control because it hurts too much, which blew my mind, but I, I really felt like I was floating in the middle of nothing. I didn't know what other solutions to consider. And I, and I didn't truly think that, um, that like my food and my nutrients and how my gut function would have such a direct correlation to how I was feeling in endometriosis. I didn't have that appreciation at the time. Yeah, that's I, I, because sometimes you have to experience it. So, I mean, let's talk, how did that change once we first met? How did that your perspective change? I well, I think I think we was talked it about also it. a pivotal moment. <laughs> I mean, I'm I hoping it was. I, I was I was resistant at first with you, and mm -hmm. I talked about this. I was like, I think there's a lot of skepticism, and you're like, oh, or like you're gonna get bamboozled into somebody that's gonna like put you on some crazy wizardry, and like I don't know, like I had I had I was I I definitely had a lot of trust issues when I first met you and I didn't fully trust like it wasn't like okay like I think we've yeah. talked about it you've met people who like I've tried everything and I'm going to resort to you I hadn't tried any everything because I didn't know what to try <laughs> and yeah, you were one sure. of the early doors that I that I knocked on and uh, but I I was very resistant to what you what the proposed course of action early on but I was certainly willing to try I was like listen I, I haven't and done anything exploring my like my nutrition and my but my all my function my internal functions and um I I think the pivotal moment for me 
was when we did the all of the the lab work. Um, that was probably the highlight for me early on, like the lab work. And I love how your approach is based in that because you're like, I could test all day long and see that you're deficient in A, B, C, D or whatever the, the deficiency yeah. is. But if you're not, if your liver isn't functioning appropriately, then supplements aren't going to help you. And I've explained this now to a number of people um, when I talk about working with you and like, they're like, right. Like it just clicks for people. It makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. You're like, oh, like my B12 deficiency isn't going to be fixed by just taking B12. We have Shocking. to understand why you have the B12 deficiency in the first place. Shocking. I, I mean, yeah. when, you, when you say it that way, it's logical. But in the moment, like, I mean, I, you could probably buy yeah. some, some DIY test and figure out what you're deficient in without even talking to hey. a doctor. But it's like what, the why is the thing that I think people... Um, can't do on their own and the and the support that you provide through uh like the one-on-one -on -one sessions all of the 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 actions that we take but then also the the learning online through your portal that's like self-learning and, and how much how much effort you put in is what you get out of it yeah that's so did we talk a little bit about the labs because i think that's important um what from your perspective, like what were the ones, and you can tell a little bit about the experience of doing the labs as well, if you want to, but just like you said, that was a really pivotal moment. Was it something specific that you saw when we did the analysis and the report after, or was it, tell me more about that. And maybe part of me is thinking that I, I think through the course of my life, I've had five uh, family doctors. Like it was like a pediatrician as I was a kid, then I had somebody, then and I was with a number of doctors over time, five, six probably, and then tons of walk-in clinics. And maybe, it, but even with five, six family doctors, I don't know if it's just the mantra of the Ontario healthcare, but like they do not like testing stuff. They, they, I have rarely been taken seriously on some things that I've asked for. And I rarely get sent for tests other than like a bit of standard blood work and like an x-ray. If you have a physical thing, that's obvious and easy to treat. Yeah, like your leg is broken. <laughs> I have a leg is broken. Send you for an x-ray, get a cast check. Easy to do. But yeah. endometriosis was messy. And it's like, you know, why do I feel this way? Or, you know, all these things are like, Oh, and it just, it's, it was so easy for so long to be like, you're a woman. It hurts. Um, so the, you know, that we did blood work, we did stool sampling and we did urine sampling and, <laughs> and then, yeah, the, the results from that were, um, especially the environmental toxins piece, I think. And then the, the gut biome, like, I don't know in what instances I would have ever gotten those kinds of tests and that kind of detail. I, I used, I had, at some point I, I have a, I was diagnosed with an intolerance to, uh, lactose. So like did some lactose testing, but that's pretty basic. Um, I had a couple of GI issues over the years and they did like a, a few scans and things, but at no point did they really, like, and, and actually, well, I traveled in South America and, and got stomach parasites, but you know, they, they like tested a, a stool sample and were like, yep, yeah, this is what you got, got some antibiotics, but it was never like a, let's look at the whole, the whole okay. system, A to Z, how is it going? What are the, maybe the issues? Yeah, and uh, the experience of of doing the stool sample. For those who don't know, you have to you FedEx your poo, <laughs> <laughs> and ideally you want to do this so that like it's fresh and it gets to the lab appropriately. <laughs> and so I uh, I had scheduled my FedEx poo pickup, and but I hadn't had <laughs> bowel movement because the experience was stressing me out. And it comes with a little kit. You have to like keep a paper hammock. Oh, well, that's so dramatic to the side of the toilet, and I was I was pooping for my FedEx delivery. <laughs> I gotta make it before eleven. Yeah, that's such I, a good story. I remember asking you, like, "Will this affect my stool? Will you grow <laughs> from my poop that it was stressed?" The messages that my clients send me, like, I have such a good laugh sometimes. You know, it's like, "Don't worry, your poop won't be affected by the amount of adrenaline that's going through your body right now oh, because you're, you're worried about, uh, you know, if the poop is gonna come out." or not so it's really helpful though because in the thing that you said I think because you've never tried anything else like most of my people have worked with uh naturopaths and they've done a bunch of functional testing and whether it's food sensitivities or lab work or micronutrient analysis I think the big pieces that are always missing is a really good stool analysis and those environmental toxins because that was a really eye-opening thing for kind of both of us in terms of the perspective for me to provide you with a treatment plan because then 
I know how long it should take in order to get rid of some of the stuff that we see has been accumulating in your tissue for probably quite some time, right? And that exposure is not necessarily maybe even now, but in the past. Uh, and so we were able to attack it a little bit more specifically and aggressively because you had goals to get pregnant fairly quickly, right? Mm -hmm. And I, um, we had been, my partner and I have been talking about getting pregnant up, up through that summer of 2022. And then there was a few things professionally that were happening. I was like, actually, I want like there's some goals and things I want to pursue in case I get pregnant really quickly. Like I want to yeah. wait for it. And then while I was doing that, that's when I reached out to you to be like, if there's things that I can do, um, there's, a, and I, I come at it from a few different angles. I think primarily I came to you because I was just told to hope that I get pregnant quickly. And that while I was waiting to get pregnant and it could take a whole bunch of time with endometriosis. So I'd been told. And so I feared, um, I was genuinely scared of being in a world of pain again, because I hadn't been lying on the floor under a desk in four years, but I was scared that that was going to happen all over again. And if nothing else, I was like, if this is, if working with you was going to just address my extreme period pain, that was already a win for me. And then yep. the, the part on fertility was, was it also a, an anxiety and a fear? Um, and I was like, but that I was prepared, like it, that I figured would take some time and there would be a process and it would need to run its course. So I, yeah. I had opened to that, but yeah, in the end I got, I got both. <laughs> like, yeah, that's it. Well, let's talk about like, what were some of the things that we implemented that, you know, for you feel like those were really the missing pieces or it really helped click that um, changed your health because uh, do you remember how long it took before your, because your period came back right after birth control it was that 10 out of 10 again, right? And it was yeah. about four months until we got it to like a four out of 10. And then it was like a two out of 10. I think the, I had gotten- do you remember that timeline? That's kind of- Yeah, I had gotten my IUD out at the beginning of October. And then we had started, we, we officially met in September and then started doing some things like even for the, for some of the testing, you had wanted to kind of wait for the baseline of the hormones to be out. Um, and I had got, so the first period I got in October was pretty light, pretty, pretty okay. November, I remember it was starting to ramp up again. And December was the first, no, November was one of my first, that was two months after. So the November period was heavy, painful, bloating, the usual shebang. And I think even then it was at a lower, it was still lower than it had been historically. I hadn't ramped yeah. up. Um, and December was one of my most painful periods for sure, because we were, I was back up at from three months after the IUD and everything had been really out of my system. And then, but working together and all the things we implemented, like January, what the, the period was probably down. So in December, I would say it would be like an eight or nine out of 10. And in January, I was closer to a six out of 10. And I'm, I'm always going to remember February, March, like I was, I almost worried that I wasn't having a period because it didn't hurt. Like I was confused what was happening and wondering. And, and it was just kind of crazy to me that in February and, and March, my last two periods were at a, yeah, four, two out of 10. Amazing. Okay. So let's talk about some of the things that you implemented. The big game changers for me uh were the supplements so like a whole cell core regimen like building up the various stages of the detox and i think that that was just like to get rid of stuff from my system the environmental toxins had come back like it was like i kept joking i was like i'm 500 percent plastic like it was <laughs> an obscene amount of of yeah bpa in my system and it and it's interesting because like i'm not somebody who totally we ignored plastics like I was like you see BPA free bottles and like I paid attention to that and I heard about it and I at that point still like I, I used to do my own take take my own lunches to work every day and they were usually in plastic containers and I didn't prioritize no plastic containers we have like a shake bottle for the smoothie was plastic everything was plastic everything comes in plastic bags and I just was like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And it was with you that really having a lens of looking at all the plastics and sources of environmental contamination that we had and slowly but surely implementing change that was a huge piece for me and 
Everybody that came over walked away with a plastic container home with this. <laughs> I remember I, you talked about a potluck that you had and you were like, everybody's taking a plastic container home. Get it problem. out of my house. <laughs> Get plastic Tupperware. Do what you want with it. Don't bring it back. And, yeah. <laughs> and then I, I actually like, I like reorganized all of our tools and nails and different size screws and all of these things. They're all <laughs> nicely labeled in plastic containers now because I had Perfect. some. That's another use for it. Yeah. So that cell core was a big piece. I like, I, we were talking about, I know what I had never had anyone care as much as you about my, about my bowel movements. <laughs> and I think I, maybe I never will, but I think that was it. That was, it was just one of those conversations. You're like, how is your sleep? How are, how is your hydration? How are you pooping? And it's so crazy that these little, like we, like speaking of trying to have a baby once you have a baby that's what everyone cares about people are super concerned about like children and newborns hydration yeah. sleep and bowel movements and then we just forget about that into adulthood and just like don't go back to the foundations that is true for everybody so cell core and the detox was it was a huge shift and that's where i think i was really noticing i got all the different symptoms of all the different phases that I was talking to you, I'm like, I'm noticing this. And you're like, that's normal for what we're doing right now. We tra we were tracking sleep with the, with the aura ring, which I still wear and use. So I thought I was a bad sleeper. I wasn't really sure. I was not prioritizing sleep. I was doing the whole sleep when you're dead, work your ass off and uh, that whole mantra. And you really got me back onto sleep is important, especially <laughs> if you're trying to conceive when you're going to have a baby sleep is the most beautiful thing and that was it and that was something that I was able to implement with my partner like just total change in our sleep philosophy hydration we shifted to distilled water in our household and that was otherwise something like we used to always we never bought bottled water we never bought water at all but um would obviously use tap water and that um hadn't had an appreciation for all of how much water was counteracting all of the good that I was trying to do and sort of like the fact that it 